and all of my tests, which I spent the bulk of three or four days working through several raw files, trying to see if I would gain a lot of benefit from a linear profile. In all of my tests, I didn't see anything earth shattering that said, Blake, you've got to do these linear profiles. They're going to make your workflow so much better. So there's something I need to talk to you about. It's called a linear profile. Now I've gotten many, many requests about my thoughts on linear profiles in my email. So I figured it'd be a great video for me to do about what my thoughts are on linear profiles. So for those of you who are not familiar with a linear profile, let's talk about what that is very quickly. First, I'm not going to show you how to make them. This is more about the difference between working with a linear profile and not working with a linear profile and where the benefits might lie with working with them and what you're going to need to be aware of when you do work with them. So essentially what a linear profile is, is it's a profile that gets placed on your raw file that takes away the default curve that is put onto your raw file from the camera manufacturer. And you might be thinking, well, hold on a second, Blake. I thought a raw file was raw data and was only raw data. Well, that's not exactly the case. Now, there's many different variations of raw files and how certain companies will add certain things into their raw files to make them look better. We've heard of things like Fuji Color and Sony Color Science and all these different uh, things that we hear about a raw file and what the camera manufacturer is putting into that raw file when we receive it. That's why all cameras are essentially different. Now, if we take that, I this concept and think about it in terms of JPEGs. Now, you know with the JPEG that when you take a picture with your camera set to JPEG, it's going to do some noise reduction, it's gonna do some sharpening, it's gonna do some color correction, it's gonna do some color saturation, it might even do some tonal and contrast adjustments because it wants you to see a beautiful JPEG straight from the camera with very little processing for you to have to worry about. Now take that and put that into context with the curve that I'm talking about that is put onto your raw file at the very beginning without you even knowing. Okay, so there's essentially, let's just imagine that this curve is just a slight bump up, which would make the midtones a little bit raised up towards the highlights. It would taper off as it goes towards your highlights and taper off as it goes towards your shadows. That's essentially the concept behind the curve that's default in your camera. So what's this thing about a linear profile then? Well, with a linear profile, essentially what you're doing is you're cutting that curve and making it just a linear curve that doesn't have a bump up into those midtones, which would have no effect. Consider it almost like working with log in the video world where everything's just flat. Okay. You don't have a boost in those midtone areas. I know we had to go over that so we could put it into context. Now there's a lot of people that use these linear profiles, especially on YouTube, YouTube influencer photographers that are using linear profiles. And I've got nothing against anyone who is using a linear profile or someone who teaches linear profiles. My job right now is to tell you about how I would use it in my workflow if I were to use it in my workflow and what you should be concerned with if you are going to use them in your workflow. So let's jump in here in Adobe Camera Raw. I have a series of images and I battle tested difficult images with linear profiles. Now, if we look at this image, this is actually from a Nikon camera, the Nikon ZFC. This is from the Sony A1. Now, what I did was I made a duplicate copy of each image and I worked on both images, one using a linear profile and the other not using a linear profile. So let's actually take this image and I'll walk through exactly what my thought process was on this so that you can see how this works. Anytime I'm going to think of adding anything into my workflow, I always go into that new thing with a non-biased approach, meaning I don't think, oh, well, this thing going to work in my workflow. I I'm not trying to prove something wrong. I'm trying to see if that is going to work in my workflow, because if it does, it could change the way I work forever. And I'm open to that, but I have to go open to that with a non-biased approach. So let's edit these images with a non-biased approach. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, just change both of these images to reset to the default. Okay. So this is the default raw file that we have here. Now I'm going to take that linear profile that I made. It's a Nikon ZFC linear profile. I already made it one of my favorites. So all I have to do is click it. Now this is what happens when you apply the linear profile. Notice how things get a little bit darker. It gets a little bit more matte finished. Okay. Notice how the highlights become a little less powerful or pungent. Okay. Now this is our default raw file with Adobe color. You'll notice that everything is more contrasty. The highlights are very bright. Look at the linear profile. Essentially what's happening is it's taking that curve and it's smashing it down and it's making it linear. So it makes it appear flat. Now, typically the way I work through all of my workflows is I press the auto button and the auto button does a great job of expanding the dynamic range in the image and getting it uh, to be a good base for me to work off of. So when I press auto on this linear profile, I'm also going to press auto on the Adobe color profile. 
Again, what do we notice that happens here? We get a boost in contrast, obviously, that's happening. But look at the sliders and how they're being operated. They are slightly different with the auto button because it is taking the data that is coming from that linear profile and it has to adjust it slightly so that it can get it to expand that dynamic range. In some images, it actually expands it a lot. So let's see if we can get this image to appear like this image. Okay, so to do that, I would probably go in here and say, okay, let's add a little less contrast to this. Okay, drop our highlights a little bit more, open up those shadows a little bit more, and we're getting close to this, very close to this. But the problem is we still have too much contrast. So I'll drop that contrast a little bit, maybe even darken it down by dropping the exposure a little bit. That is going to get me very close to what the effect would be like for a linear profile. Now, the reason why I showed you that was because I want you to understand that if you're going to use linear profiles, it is going to change the way you work with all of the sliders in Adobe Camera or Lightroom. So what you once did in Adobe Camera or Lightroom might change. Actually, it will change, but it may change significantly. So in order to get this image to have the same contrast feel as what we given as a linear profile, we have to drop that contrast quite a bit. And I think we still have to drop it even more and maybe even make this slightly darker to get this even close to that linear profile. And we're getting close, but here's the thing. Are we gonna be able to mimic it completely? No. And the reason why is because this image with this Adobe Color Profile still has that bump of a curve from the original raw manufactured data. So essentially what we're doing is we're working against that curve to try and get this to look like a linear profile. But if we were to go through and edit this image, maybe I would, uh, you know, drop the highlights just a little bit more, open up those shadows, maybe brighten it up a little bit, add a little bit of vibrance here because we're going to need that because it's also going to wash out the colors. Uh, and then maybe even make our sky a little bit more blue and get our green in there a little bit more. I think that's going to be pretty good for that. Okay. Now, if I were to try and copy the settings from this linear profile image and paste them to this image, what's going to happen? Okay, let's do that. Grab this image, press control, grab this image, right click, and then we will sync our settings here. Okay, once I press enter, uh, the only setting I don't want to sync is going to be the Adobe color. I want that to be Adobe color and not the linear profile. So what you'll see when we do it that way, we're reversing the concept. The first time I edited this, it was to try and get this image to look like the linear profile image. Now we're trying to get the linear profile to look like this image. Okay, so let's see what happens here. We might need to increase the exposure, increase the contrast. We can't push our highlights or our shadows too much further here because we've kind of lost those sliders in the process. But you'll see here, in order to get this linear profile to appear like an Adobe color image, we are going to have to bump up the exposure quite a bit and even increase that contrast quite a bit to get that to look similar in nature. So you see what we're doing here. I'm just showing you the competition of what happens between a regular raw file that is trying to look like a linear profile raw file and a linear profile raw file is trying to get it to look like an Adobe color profile. And you might think, well, why are you doing that? Blake, that's not exactly the intent of working with a linear profile. I understand that. But for me to understand a linear profile and why I want to use it in my workflow, I have to battle test it against images that I would normally work on with my workflow in that same way. Right. So that's what I'm doing here. Going back and forth to see if I can get one to look like the other. And do I receive any benefit from using the linear profile in this image? Now, this image is a quite difficult image to work with. And the reason why is because we have a big blow up back here. I did that on purpose. It's a very high contrast image. I'm shooting into the sun. It's not an HDR bracketed series of exposures. It's a difficult image to work with. So does this work? Does this linear profile concept work well there? It does, but does it give me any benefit more than what a regular raw file would? Do I get these highlights back? Not necessarily because of an image like this. I've already lost those highlights completely. So it's kind of a bad image to use for that to try and compare whether a linear profile can get me more than a regular raw file. OK, so let's move on and I'll look at some other images. Where I don't really see a benefit is an image like this. OK, so this image doesn't have a whole lot of dynamic range in it. We aren't shooting into the sun. Uh, this is a very basic photograph that I took in, a, in Acadia National Park. It's not a very difficult image to shoot, nor would I need to bracket raw exposures to do this. OK, so if we look at this, this is with the linear profile on it. This is with no linear profile on it, but it has one of my profiles that I've created for it to kind of make the colors more exuberant and vibrant and beautiful. 
The reason why I'm showing you this is because you can use a linear profile on an image that's simple like this. It doesn't necessarily help you much on an image like this. So then I went to this image, which was actually a DNG image that was converted from three raw brackets to create this image to see how the linear profile that we have up here is going to compare to something like Adobe Color in this image here. I processed both of these images to get them almost identical, if I could get them identical, to see if I'm going to gain any benefit from using a linear profile on a difficult HDR bracketed series of images. And from what I gather here, it's not that different. I think what I get here with the linear profile is a little bit more natural coloring that's happening in the image and maybe a little bit more natural highlights. But again, not something that I necessarily would have to fight too much to resurrect in a regular raw file either. Now, the thing that most concerned me with this linear profile concept was actually the sun. So I'm going to zoom into the sun here, make sure that both of them are about the same zoom ratio at 75 ish percent okay so we can go back and forth between them what i saw with the linear profile is that it did a little bit more of a natural rendering of the sun uh brightness that would happen above the sun that you see here you can see i got some sun or some sensor dust spots there but what i'm concerned with is what's happening in the rays okay now this is a difficult image to process uh so i get it we're, we're, we're really testing the boundaries here of a linear profile versus a regular profile. And if I look at the sun, look at the rays of the sun. This is the non-linear profile, just the Adobe color process like so. Look at what happened with the linear profile. I kind of lose some of the natural uh, transition in those highlights. It goes from being a very uh, smooth transition in the non-linear profile to a very harsh transition of these very sharp rays that are coming from that. Now, can I do anything to fix that? Well, let's try and drop the, the whites. It might be within the whites that that's happening. Okay, we'll drop those whites down and see what happens. Um, and it does appear like the whites are what's controlling that. But we also have to look at this linear profile here and see that it does get a little bit more dull throughout the entire image. So do we need to bump up the contrast to try and get some of that white back? Yes, we do. Okay, so we need some of that white back because the image is dull without it. We get pretty close. But the reason why I showed you that here is that these sliders cannot be used the same way anymore when we go to process our image. You'll notice that if I press the auto button here, it's going to bump up those whites to do that. Well, I have to be really cognizant of what's happening to these areas. So in order to fix that, I have to drop the whites and bring up the contrast to get a similar concept, maybe even bring up the highlight, the exposure a little bit to get a similar look to what the auto button would get. So operating with a linear profile is not necessarily as easy as working with a regular raw file. You will need to understand that if you're going to be working with linear profiles, these sliders are going to change. The whole nature of them is going to change. The nature of the auto button is going to change. Everything is going to change. So if you're going to use them in your workflow, please understand that. Now, looking at this image here, these images, I just tried to get pretty close to one another just so we could see if we get any benefit from a linear profile, which is this image versus a nonlinear profile, which is this image. OK, and I think that they're both pretty close in nature. This obviously has a little bit more highlight boost, whereas this image doesn't necessarily get that. So how do I get that? Do I need to increase the contrast to get that? Well, if I do that, I'm also going to make my darks darker. Do I need to increase the brightness to get those highlights back? That's the push and pull that we're going to play here. And in most cases, I would say that you're going to see the most advantage using a linear profile, not at the raw level. OK, I would recommend that if you're going to be using these linear profiles, know that you're probably going to be doing more work in Photoshop with luminosity masking or blend if masking to ensure that your highlights and shadows get the tonal values that you want and also your colors get the uh, approach that you want them to have as well. I don't think that this is a deal breaker for linear profiles, but just know that there's probably going to be more processing that you're going to be doing later in Photoshop after using the linear profile method. I'll go to one more example here. This is an, actually an HDR bracketed series. Here's the darkest, darkest version of it. Here's the mid-tone version of it. And here's the brightest, bright version of it. Um, this one, you can see that I tried to put a linear profile on here to see if it would resurrect the highlights. Uh, if we just set this to Adobe Color, you can see that we have a lot of really blown highlights. Here, what I'm looking at is how a linear profile reacts to uh, a regular raw file that's overexposed to see if it can help us with the highlight blowouts that we have in the background. It does a pretty good job because it's flattening down that curve again and not giving us that bump in those mid-tone highlight areas there. So um, let's just look at these are the processed 
uh, DNG files that I created. This is the linear profile version. This is the nonlinear profile version. You can see that both of these create a phenomenal starting point for me to jump off into Photoshop and elaborate on the tones and colors in my image. But I want you to look at the sliders here. Look at the linear profile sliders here and look at how far they're pushed to get them to this level. Now let's look at the nonlinear profile and see the difference. They are not pushed quite as far. And we're working against that tone curve that we have flattened out or working with it, I should say, not against it. But again, one of the things that I'm concerned with here is if we look at this image is this highlight area right here. We need to make sure that we're cognizant of how those highlight areas are going to come off and we bump, we even go close to touching that whites adjustment. It's going to throw the image in a different direction. So we have to balance that with the contrast adjustment and probably even the exposure adjustment to get it to be similar to what it's like when we're working with a regular raw file that doesn't have a linear profile. Like I said, this would be a great starting point for us to jump off into Photoshop and elaborate more with things like luminosity masking or even some of the panels that I've created to get this effect. So at the end of the day, what do I think about linear profiles? Because that's what everybody asks me. Let me just lay it out like this. I think that there are some benefits to using linear profiles. I think you get a little bit more natural color in your image uh, that doesn't go too far too fast. So you can manipulate that color a little bit more and probably get away with a little bit more. I also feel like you gain a little bit of a benefit uh, in the mid-tone to dark areas of your image. If you're going to be using Photoshop, you could be doing some really great luminosity masking work on something like a linear profile. The other thing that you get a benefit from is that these are camera specific. So when you do apply a linear profile, uh, that linear profile is specifically for that camera and is adjusting for that camera itself with that linear curve that you're putting on there. So it does give you a little bit of an advantage because it's not quite a generic workflow. Now, there are some downsides, though. What are the things that you need to be aware of if you're going to be working with linear profiles? Number one, all of your sliders are going to change in reaction to this linear profile. You have to understand what's happening with a LUT based profile or that's kind of what this is uh, when you're working with LUT profiles. That profile goes over top of all of the settings that you're working on in the raw stack. So what you're basically doing when you're moving the sliders is you're working against a piece of transparency film that is being placed on top of that image, on top of those slider adjustments that are that slider, that that piece of film I'm talking about is essentially the linear profile. So yes, you're kind of working against it, but you're working with it at the same time. But all of your slider adjustments, all of the adjustments in Adobe Camera are going to change, not just the ones in the basic settings, but even your masks. Everything is going to change when you use a linear profile. You just need to be aware of that because your workflow is going to change. How you operate with these sliders is going to change. Is it better? Is it worse? That's up for you to decide. It's going to change. I will also say that this is not necessarily a one trick pony. Is a linear profile necessary for every single image you're going to bring in Adobe Camera Raw? I don't think so. What I think that you would get benefit from is an image that's giving you a little bit of trouble, uh, maybe in the highlight areas or maybe in the brighter areas of the image and you are feel like you're working against the highlights. A linear profile might be a great approach for you to cut through that a little bit and start with a less bright image. These linear profiles are not going to make your images magically better. And working with the linear profile is not going to make you any better than anybody else who's not working with a linear profile. It's just a different way to work. In all of my tests, which I spent the bulk of three or four days working through several raw files, trying to see if I would gain a lot of benefit from a linear profile. In all of my tests, I didn't see anything earth shattering that said, Blake, you've got to do these linear profiles. They're going to make your workflow so much better. But workflow is actually a pretty personal thing whether you want to think about it as a personal thing or not. The things that I do in my images and how I operate with my images are very personal to the way I like to work. Am I going to use linear profiles? I probably will use them, but not necessarily on every single image. As I said, there are going to be images that I'll probably gain some benefit from using a linear profile, but I don't think it's going to change my workflow forever. I feel like linear profiles these days are kind of a buzzword. It's kind of like luminosity masking. When it first came out, everybody wanted to know how what it was and how to use it. Linear profiles are very much the same for me in that regard. But there is a place for luminosity masking in your workflow. So I do strongly feel that there could be a place for linear profiles in your workflow as well. Maybe as time progresses, my thoughts on these linear profiles will change. 
One thing that I wish we could do in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom is apply two profiles, because then I think you'd have some potential for some really serious adjustments. Currently, as it stands, it's quite difficult to make a two profile profile. You can, you can make a profile that includes a profile. So you can make a profile that includes your linear profile that does something on top of that linear profile within the profile that becomes one profile. But that's so confusing. If we could just have like a primary profile and maybe a secondary profile, that would be awesome. And I could really get on board with that. And there, I think we could have some serious potential for using the linear profiles in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. This video was not designed to be a walkthrough on the linear profile. It was designed to be a work through, not a walkthrough. Okay. We worked through the idea of what it could be to use these linear profiles in our workflow and compare them to what we're already doing in our workflow to see if it's going to be helpful for us. Now, I highly recommend you do the same thing in your workflow, work on multiple images and try to make the images look like one another. Try to make a Adobe color image look like a linear profile. Try to make a linear profile look like an Adobe color and see what happens to the sliders in the process. It's the only way that you're going to understand how those linear profiles are going to react to your raw workflow. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.